uh, you know, I had already talked to um, all of you about uh, our role of TMS and stroke. So let me just continue. Have two videos, so there may be some repetition uh, for people who have uh, watched our earlier. Um, but I've tried to add some videos, something to make it a little more interesting. Uh, but I think uh, for people who have been who have been logging on to this webinar for the first time, I think they'll find it more useful. So obviously, you know, I'm very, very, very interested in uh, TMS. This is a yeah, this is a lady. I have recorded this video. So this uh, this lady is speaking obviously in the local language, which is Telugu. So people who knows Telugu would have understood. But uh, for people, for several other people who didn't understand, just me, let me uh, just um, translate. She is saying that she had suffered from stroke because of which she developed weakness of her right hand and difficulty in speech and uh, uh, and she presented to us after three months after stroke and she was struggling with speech and right hand function and uh, with this uh, our tms therapy she found a tremendous improvement in her uh, in her right hand function she's extremely happy we gave her around uh, maybe around i think uh, around uh, 10 sessions so within 10 sessions she had dramatic improvement and uh, when actually when she came to us she had plateaued out that means that there, there was some initial improvement and there was no improvement after that but uh, once we restarted uh, tms therapy now there was uh, there was um, a further improvement and uh, she was very happy and she does continue to receive uh, a tms therapy even now though there is very good improvement in her hand function because she's having some residual spasticity and i think with few more sessions of uh, tms therapy i'm very hopeful that um, her acid will again go away. And I'm just showing you a video recording of another patient who is going to share his story with all of us. Story, was not a known diabetic, developed a stroke, and uh, at the time of his diagnosis of stroke, was also diagnosed to be having diabetes, and then he had significant hand dysfunction. He could not move his hand at all, uh, left hand. So he presented to us after one and a half year after stroke. He had almost given up all hope that he would ever regain his left hand function. And then with the uh, hand function, he's able to um, uh, uh, use his left hand for all things. He's able to uh, lift weights. And even he's able to drive, an, uh, drive a, um, a car. And uh, because of which he has regained his employment. Uh, since he was uh, physically disabled, he was not working. But now since he has... Uh, uh, he got back his uh, left hand function and his uh, gait also improved. He was earlier walking like a drunkard, uh, like a swing gait. Now he has become uh, very stable and is able to walk independently and he has developed good hand function. And so he has gone back to his work. So his wife was working when he was sick. Now from December 1st, that is yesterday, he has asked his wife to stay at home. And he has taken up his wife's job. 
which he had taken up earlier. So these are two interesting cases. The first case, this case, is a case in which she presented to us after three months. And she had also given up hope. Uh, and we did TMS and she improved. And this other gentleman, he came to us almost after one and a half year. And, uh, you know, when people think that after one and a half year, that uh, they won't get better with TMS. But I think even in delayed cases, we should not give up um, uh, TMS and you should offer TMS to all these patients. And you, as you have uh, shared in these videos, both our patients have done very well. And this is a, uh, this is a, this is a double cone coil we are using re uh, new, uh, uh, recently. This is the double cone coil. See, most of you will be using a, most of you will be using a figure of eight uh, coil, but you see this is uh, more molded according to the shape of this uh, head. And I believe that uh, this works better. Dr. Zong, when he had come to Hyderabad about uh, uh, three years ago, two years ago, he showed us uh, this, uh, this uh, double cone coil and we were very impressed with it. And at last, I'm happy to tell that we are doing with the double cone uh, coil and it is going, uh, going, showing good results. So these are the three cases that I wanted to share. And uh, this patient is getting, this patient is getting for dysphagia. So he's very early. This is just a third day of his uh, TMS therapy. So, you know, as I uh, mentioned earlier, now we have a lo lot of experience with uh, TMS and uh, rehabilitation. We have been doing TMS uh, since about three years. and. Uh, we have done to almost 1,500 patients, 10 million pulses, uh, 20,000 sessions. And now we have got a very good uh, experience of what I would record, uh, what I would regard. And uh, most of our patients, uh, you know, this, uh, just to review the literature, Merton and Morton, first uh, transcranially uh, transmitted electricity across the scalp to stimulate the adrenaline cortex. Then was Dr. Barker of Sheffield University to use a magnet. Uh, this is Dr. Barker. And uh, since 1985, there has been a very exponential growth. And uh, you know, stroke, there is loss of uh, neurons and which translates to long-term functional disability. So brain stimulation is what we use, non-invasive brain stimulation. Uh, TMS and TDCS are very popular. That's what we use uh, regularly. So we have done uh, TMS therapy for all patients, brainstem, cortical, subcortical stroke. And um, whether it is uh, subacute, delayed, or late, even after four months, we found that uh, they all respond. We have had very, very gratifying results. And, uh, you know, just to compare our uh, patient groups, we compared the results of of our patients who underwent TMS and the other group was patients who were offered TMS but did not go for TMS. And obviously the patients who got TMS uh, benefited a lot. They did extremely well. And uh, more importantly, we don't want to hurt our patients. And I'm very happy to tell, despite those 20, 22, 23,000 uh, sessions that we conducted, none of them had any adverse events. Uh, at most they had some mild, uh, twitching of the scalp, or some facial pains, uh, scalp pain, but nothing beyond that. So these popular theories are interhemispheric inhibition theory and the functional reserve theory. So for interhemispheric inhibition theory is something that you already know, that uh, the normal side tries to dominate the abnormal side. And then the functional reserve theory is that uh, the TMS actually activates uh, the underlying uh, neurons uh, which are not contributing to the function. Uh, and uh, with TMS, they start functioning. So we stimulate the, uh, the abnormal hemisphere using a frequency of 10. And uh, we inhibit the normal uh, hemisphere. And in all cases, we even stimulate the left DLPFC. And what we have noted is longer is better. So patients who have undergone for longer periods have done better. So we have done there even some patients who are like, uh, uh, for uh, patients like uh, uh, 10, uh, 100 sessions, 
Some patients even took 200 sessions. They all have done well. Brains, we stimulate both sides along with left DLPFC. Neglect improves, she is able to stay straight. Dysphagia improves. His Ryle's tube and hand function, as I mentioned to you earlier. And even a meta analysis of literature shows that uh, TMS therapy is in a stroke relations. And in the videos that I demonstrated, when they come late, do TMS. When they come early, do TMS. At least offer them TMS therapy. And in our experience, they all improve and the results are very gratifying and satisfactory. And uh, most of the patients even able to go back to work. So it is a contribution, our contribution to the society. So instead of becoming dependent, they start contributing to the society, these stroke patients, which is, I think, a very, um, uh, very encouraging results, very inspiring uh, results. So now, with our experience in the last three years, we have uh, we have uh, become very confident about the safety and efficacy. And I would uh, encourage to use TMS therapy wherever uh, wherever uh, it is possible. So actually, I will share this uh, patient's uh, video next time. But this patient had come to us and he was not able to move any his hands. Now he's able to move his hands. Next time I will show you his picture. Again, this is another lady uh, who was uh, not able to walk, came to a wheelchair. And after several um, sessions of uh, TMS, uh, he's able to walk normally. And again, this is a lady with uh, dysphagia with the right tube. And few days later, she's able to eat. And even in cases where uh, we don't know what is the cause, we do offer TMS therapy and, uh, you know, I think results are better than not doing. So I think uh, TMS has a definite role to play in uh, stroke rehabilitation. Earlier is better. As soon as the patient stabilizes, uh, I think we need to offer them TMS. And longer treatment is better. And all forms of stroke respond. And I think uh, even if you feel that TMS is not helping one of your patients, I would suggest that you persist do more sessions and I think eventually all these patients uh, um, uh, get better. And I think the way to go forward is uh, offering these patients early, early in their disease. And I think it should be integrated with other non-invasive forms of brain stimulation. In uh, the days of COVID pandemic, where you can't expect these patients to come very often, so you can do a few sessions of TMS and then ask them to continue with the TDCS machine at home. I think to conclude, TMS should be a standard of care in a stroke rehabilitation and even in any other neurological diseases where the treatment is, the outcome is less than satisfactory. I think we should do it. And I strongly thank uh, uh, the people at Yingchi and all of you uh, for participating in this uh, webinar. And I look forward to share more of my experience with all of you.